Hey everyone, welcome back to the Biochemistry SI Program YouTube channel. Before we start, please fill out the feedback form so we can know how to adjust our videos to make them better for you for the future. The series of videos for exam three will be all about metabolism. It may be important to address metabolism in simple terms first. Metabolism, in simple words, describes a set of life-sustaining chemical reactions in organisms that involve the breakdown of nutrients to produce energy and the synthesis of complex molecules necessary for cellular functions. We can throw out this definition for a more specific set of two definitions. Catabolism is the set of metabolic processes that break down large molecules into smaller units, releasing energy in the process. You can remember this by picturing something you love, let's call it a vase, getting destroyed by your cat, breaking it down on the floor. Anabolism, on the other hand, is the set of metabolic processes that build up complex molecules from smaller units using energy in the process. So, the title of this video denotes the world wide web of metabolism. It's not the most descriptive name. We mainly chose it because we are in the midst of spooky season in October. It's probably better to call it a map. Starting today, we'll be covering every single metabolic process in a map so you can see how they relate to each other on one single document. Today's session will begin with glycolysis. In glycolysis, a 6-carbon sugar known as glucose is split into two molecules of a 3-carbon sugar called pyruvate. This yields two ATP molecules containing free energy, two pyruvate molecules, two high-energy electron-carrying molecules of NADH, and two molecules of water. You should refer to Dr. A's slides for more information. The first step in glycolysis is the conversion of D-glucose into glucose 6-phosphate with the help of the enzyme hexokinase. Here, the glucose ring is phosphorylated. Phosphorylation is the process of adding a phosphate group to a molecule derived from ATP. As a result, at this point in glycolysis, one molecule of ATP has been consumed, and this is one of the three irreversible steps of glycolysis. The second reaction is the reversible rearrangement of glucose 6-phosphate into fructose 6-phosphate by phosphoglucose isomerase. As the name of the enzyme suggests, this reaction involves an isomerization reaction. In the third step, fructose 6-phosphate is converted to fructose 1,6-bisphosphate. Similar to the reaction that occurs in step 1, a second molecule of ATP provides the phosphate group that is added on to the fructose 6-phosphate molecule, making this an irreversible reaction. This enzyme, phosphofructokinase 1, is super important, as it is what makes this step the rate-limiting step of glycolysis. It actually has a sister enzyme called phosphofructokinase 2, which is bifunctional. We made a video about this over the summer. You should check it out for some more information. In step four, the enzyme aldolase splits fructose 1,6-bisphosphate into two sugars that are isomers of each other. These two sugars are dihydroxyacetone phosphate, or DHAP, and glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate. In step five, the enzyme trisophosphate isomerase rapidly converts the molecule of dihydroxyacetone phosphate into glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate. This yields us with two molecules of GAP that can be used in the next step of glycolysis. Glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate dehydrogenase dehydrogenates and adds an inorganic phosphate to glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate, producing 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate. In this step, two events take place. One, the glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate is oxidized by the coenzyme NAD, and two, the molecule is phosphorylated by the addition of a free phosphate group. Phosphoglycerate kinase transfers the phosphate group from 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate to ATP, to produce ATP and 3-phosphoglycerate. With this synthesis of ATP, we have canceled the first two molecules of ATP that we used, leaving us with a net of zero ATP molecules up to this stage. In step eight, the enzyme phosphoglyceromutase relocates the phosphate from 3-phosphoglycerate from the third carbon to the second carbon to form 2-phosphoglycerate. In step nine, the enzyme enolase removes the molecule of water from 2-phosphoglycerate to form phosphoenolpyruvic acid, or PEP. In the final step of glycolysis, the enzyme pyruvate kinase irreversibly transfers a phosphate from PEP to ADP to form pyruvic acid and ATP. This is glycolysis. Funny enough, gluconeogenesis is sometimes considered as the reverse of glycolysis, but that is technically incorrect as there are three irreversible steps, step 1, 3, and 10. With this, we need a way to make phosphoenolpyruvate, fructose 6-phosphate, and glucose. This happens through three bypass reactions. Glucose 6-phosphatase converts glucose 6-phosphate to free glucose, which is released in the blood. The second major control point is the reaction catalyzed by fructose 1,6-bisphosphatase to reverse that reaction to fructose 6-phosphate. 
Lastly, the carboxylation of pyruvate to form oxaloacetate at the expense of a molecule of ATP is catalyzed by pyruvate carboxylase. Oxaloacetate is simultaneously decarboxylated and phosphorylated by phosphatenylpyruvate carboxykinase to generate phosphatenylpyruvate. In the next video, we'll talk about glycogen synthesis. See you in the next one!